Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining the Arm Training channel. Today, we will look at a New England Boys and Girls School 8. Kevin and Juno sent me their videos separately, I think, but it was a bit of coordinated. And they asked for a review. So, the season's going well, could be better. It's actually not a bad season, if I understand it overall. And, um, well, you guys wanted some feedback. All right, here it is. So I understand that this is a race piece. Now yeah, that's a good shot. Okay, now I see you very well from the side. Good. And one thing you probably realize, there's a lot of splish splash. There's a lot of wash out and splash at the catch and all that stuff, but that's secondary. What for me, what, what I mind the most is that you guys don't roll together. It is, th that is one of these cases, and I don't mean to be mean at all, but if I do a video analysis, I try to be straight to the point. There is no, there is no use saying, you did a great job, you get a medal for, for participating. Either it's good or it's not good. And I don't really differentiate between somebody who's trying to go for the Olympics, somebody who's trying to go for um, national scholastics. Now, the point here is that you guys are synced in terms of when your blades get out of the water and when they get into the water. But that's about it. That's the only synchronicity that I see. Maybe the blade work in terms of when you when you square. Boys, this is it, it looks great, but it is irrelevant for the, the greater problem you have. And the most dominant issue I see is that the way you use your bodies throughout the entire drive, look at that. It is everybody left to his own devices follow the stroke. So the only one in the entire boat who's able to do his thing is the stroke guy. But the stroke guy is pushed by seven other athletes who are super ambitious. I think you're all working very hard and you're doing a great job, but there's one thing you need to start doing right away and it is how to use the body in a way that it actually creates somewhat of a synced up force curve. Again, I'm not trying to be negative, I'm trying to be constructive, but I'm trying to be straight to the point. So the, re the question is where do you start? If you look at an 8 like this, that is going actually quite good, but there's so much room to improve and there's not much time. Where do you start as a coach? So where I start, this might be wrong for many other people, but for me it works. Where I start is that I try to, um, I synchronize the finish position first. And by position, I'm not talking about when the blades get out of the water. I'm, I'm trying to sync up the lean back, the body tension, the shoulder position, the hand position, and the elbow position. Now let's go step by step. The first thing I'd like to sync up is how far you lean back. Now, if you look at the stroke guy, leans back quite a lot. I know there are anthropomenic differences. So the relation of body parts to each other. And that sometimes requires a different posture or different positioning of your body. So a tall person or a person with a long torso has a different lean back than a person with a shorter torso and all that stuff. But there are massive differences here. Just look at, I'm, I'm just looking at the upper abs, lower abs, so belly button, chest, if you want so. Is that under sufficient tension to keep enough connection to the foot stretchers, not in a push way, but it actually an angling and a bit of a pull way. Is that the case here at the finish or not? Stroke guy, of course, but he can also do his own thing. Bow guy, mm-mm looks completely different. So I'm, I'm not looking at shoulders, I'm not looking at elbows, not at head position, I'm just looking at chest to belly button. What's going on here? That's a different angle, massively different. So 7C, you should bring the upper abs out, not the chest, because this is going to bring your shoulder back. No, bring the upper abs out, okay? And try to be, try to um, rotate your pelvis so that you actually sit up straight. You don't, you, you don't have to, as in German we say straight as a candle, you don't have to be super straight but compact 
in control of your own body. Right now, this is a pulling into your system. No, you want to use your body weight until the end. This is what I'm trying to get into the boys' heads right now. So you guys need to understand that the finish is the end of a of a drive cycle where you have where you have just stopped using upper body weight to propel the boat. So I want to end up at a point where you all jointly use upper body weight all together because upper body weight is free. You carry it around all the time. And most of you are doing legs to arms and that's the best way to become slow. So now seven seed, you need to bring your lower abs and upper abs out again that way, not chest out. That's going to bring your shoulders back and we don't want that. Six seed, that is actually a decent position because there's some tension in the upper abs, a nice connection, but you give, give it a bit more lean back and a bit more, bit more tension in your upper abs, push them out. The reason why everybody's kind of doing his own thing, because the objective, I perceive this to be, the case clearly must have been get the blades out of the water at the same point of time. How you get there was not so much an issue. I understand that, and I wrote US high school crew myself. This can be a nightmare to coach because there's not much time. Nevertheless, I perceive it to be most important to sync up the upper body use. I'd rather have somebody exit the water a little later and fix that just before the race. Okay, so six seat, a little more lean back, a little more upper abs out. Five seat, big boy, lots of mass, lots of muscles, not enough tension in your trunk. So if I look at that, your core stability is an issue. And I do think you need to bring your lower abs and upper abs out a bit. All right, four seed, nice tension, upper abs, quite compact. Um, focus a bit too much on bringing your chest out. Don't do that. Focus a bit more on bringing the abs out. That's okay. Three seed, pretty much like seven seed. You guys got to make sure that you get some more tension. Abs out, bring your legs, quads a bit more under tension. Two seat looks looks actually really good, nice tension, and that's a good example for me. You don't have to have uh, a super straight body in order to have sufficient tension. If you just look at the entire posture, there's energy behind it. That guy is under control of himself and therefore off the boat. Um, I think great great job by the coach to put him in second pos in, in position number two, because this is where you stabilize the boat. Excellent work. Um, bow seat, a bit more tension, lower abs, upper abs. It's all a bit too soft at the finish. And the reason why almost everybody is a bit soft, soft at the finish is because you focus too much on pulling, not on creating leverage. But the way to create real speed in the boat is using leverage. And if you're not used to that, uh, you think it's push with your legs. So hard legs, 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 legs and then pull, pull, pull. And that is exactly how it doesn't work. Woo! Next objective, shoulders. Shoulders, elbows, heads. Uh, I think catch does a, uh, stroke does a great job. Looks good. Excellent, not much to argue. Number two seat. Make sure upper abs out as we talked about before. Your chin should be up a little, not too much. I'm not a fan and I'm certainly not a proponent of rowing all the way with your chin up that disconnects you from the entire process of the boat what's going on with the blade with the blade work what's going on the water line next to the boat is there a continuous water flow um past the boat or not so just a little bit the next thing is that your elbows here just looking I, I know you just um fitter here with the inside hand so it's a bit of a different posture but i do think that your outside elbow, if I'm not mistaken, that's too close to the body. It's a weird angle to tell that, but my, I, I reckon if I'm not mistaken 100%, you do this, but you should be doing that. So hands and elbows, same vertical level at the finish. So that you hear, you, you, your elbow tells the hand where to pull. 
So the pull is not that, the pull is that, and that originates around the hip. And this is why elbows and hands have to be connected. Six seed, lean back a bit more, uh, shoulders and head, great position, great job, awesome. Five seed, um, if you will later, see, we will later see everybody roll. You do exactly the leg drive and pull thing. You need to start to lever to do to use more leverage, much more than that. And then you end up with way more tension here because if you use your upper body, you need tension in your trunk. Okay. Same is true for seven seat. So your inside shoulder is pretty high. So essentially you row a skull in a sweep boat. And at the beginning, if you're not used to row starboard, what you do here, you're just gonna fake it a bit. So you lift up the right shoulder a bit and try to drop the left one eventually that one will become flexible enough so that you actually uh, can follow the inboard so if that is if that is my inboard i want to make sure my shoulder girdle mimics uh position of the inboard i can't be straight with my shoulders if what i have to pull on actually is in an angle and the same is true with the rotation of the of the shoulders when you go out on your case starboard when you go out to the catch so you got to fake it a little and make sure there's a rotation rowing is centered around the hip and pelvis like any full body motion just like golf um i reckon just like swimming cross-country skiing skiing it's it's all around the center of the body because this is where the forces meet from the hands and from the feet and we're going to make sure that we actually use the center of the body as well. It's, it's being neglected a bit. All right, four seed. Hey, great job. Nothing to, nothing to argue. I think four and six seed, um, you guys do it very well. And also two seed. I wonder if you guys had issues going straight. I seriously wonder. Because if I look at the entire port side at the finish, two, four, six, eight, that is almost consistently under tension and everybody who doesn't row with the upper body or with sufficient upper body tension here um seven five three and one is on starboard so i think there is there's a side problem very interesting hmm. three seat a uh, very similar issue and like the entire starboard crew your your shoulder your inside shoulder appears to be too high insufficient tension here and therefore not enough motion with the upper body bow side same thing make sure the inside shoulder is a little lower or the outside shoulder is a little higher now let's see your roll in in frame by frame how do you prepare so you see stroke has a lot of issues getting the plates over the wash from the rest of the team so the question is is there washout oh yeah <laughs> i know that that's not fun I rode stroke um, varsity eight in high school. It's not fun. The wash is not fun. As you approach the catch, yeah, lots of wash. The, re the question is why? I can tell you why because you're ready to start the drive, but all eight of you, you're doing everything you can to get the last bit of length, and the last bit of length means almost disintegrating your body. You're, you're leaning forward you it's try you know the old game you, if you watch my videos you know what's going to come now but i repeat it so get a door handle or get the table whatever you have put your hands on the table okay and now we use make sure your upper body weight rests on your hands okay you ready does it rest on your hands okay get good support next step pull on it <laughs> it takes too long how do you pull on it you lift the upper body but because that's the quickest way to do it now and that is exactly what we have here so the hands go down almost everybody is too close um, to the water with the hands and too far away with the blades now of course i can only see the starboard side but i suppose the boat doesn't fall every catch and therefore i reckon everybody has the blades off the water a lot good now the next thing is going to be that you most of you have to to get rid of the upper body weight on your oar handles in order to get the blades into the water but the problem is that your 
your timing doesn't wait until you have released the weight from the hands, put it back on the seat. The next step is getting the upper body up. Now, there are two, two ways to solve this issue. The, the first way is to raise the upper body. The second one is to move the seat without actually moving the blade or moving the boat with the help of the blade. That is actually what, what we want to achieve. Now, if you just look at the blades now and look at the hands, upper body motion. This is where you, this is where you start the drive. And that is precisely the reason why you have a lot of splash. And another problem, six seat, three seat, your pelvic control is insufficient, absolutely insufficient. You need to make sure that you rock over more and hold that. See, you, you bend and break yourself to get as much forward reach as you can, a long reach at the catch, and that is precisely what's causing the problem. Because what you do, you can see your outside hand is actually deeper than your inside hand, or to be more precise, your outside shoulder is deeper than your inside shoulder. You cannot pull this way. So what you do is that you round your back as much as possible. All the tension that was there during the recovery, which is still there now, is lost now. Now you brutalize your back with a very hard leg drive. And of course, you pivot right from the catch. There is no other way. First of all, because you need to get weight off your hands. And second of all, because you've just demolished all the posture and tension in your pelvis. And that is a classic. A lot of people roll like this. And a lot of people wonder why a couple years down the line they have back pain. These small muscles right here have not been designed to withstand the load that your legs can produce. My apologies for being straight, but that's the point. You have to make sure you use the large muscle groups, not the tiny stabilizers here. But with such a round back, there is no way you get into an upper body leverage. What we would need is this. Leg drive, hold, pivot. But the problem is that there's not enough time for you guys and the rest of the ship to sync up. So I think you need to do a couple of drills. The first drill is catch legs only back to the catch. And while you do legs only, you want to make sure that A, you don't overreach at the catch. The most important thing is your pelvic rotation. If the pelvic rotation doesn't work, you're screwed. There is a big, big problem um, evolving around that. Second issue, as you approach the catch, make sure your inside shoulder is relaxed and lower than your outside shoulder for the simple reason that this is what the inward looks like. It isn't straight and it certainly isn't reversed. So you have to mimic that. Third, don't reach out extra long. Rotate. Rotate around the pin, but not don't overdo it. You just saw that here. See how much you lean forward? See when the blade actually enters the water and what where your upper bodies are right now? Have a good look at the forward at the forward lean of all forward angle lean, forward lean angle of all the upper bodies. When is there a connection? Now. Where are the upper bodies? Almost three quarter slide. So why do you why do you try to overrage and disintegrate your actually good postures and positions for the sake of having a long reach when the long reach is ineffective and your effective drive starts at maybe three quarter slide? Wouldn't it be better not to reach out that much and have a body position that allows you to start the leg drive right away. Light hands, drop in, start the drive. No posture change at the catch, simply none. And the next issue is here that that's the, that's the underlying main issue of them all. The upper body simply don't function together. Stroke and two seat 
if there is any upper body coordination, that's the only one I see. Yeah, and maybe bow seat as well. So I think the stroke and the bab hair, you guys are the most synced up of them all. And the rest happens with legs and arms, and legs and arms. Finish position, inside shoulder versus outside shoulder. Now, I'm not trying to be, I keep on saying this, don't take this personal, but that boat, this, this boat is a lot more potential, a lot more. So I will jump now on the buyer rower. Um, it's rigged for sculling, not sweep rowing, but the principles are very similar. And maybe I can show you something with the sculling board handle. And I will try to show you what the drills are that I usually do to get people there. To, and, and I will also try to show you what the difference is in force curves. This is the signal mode. There, there's also the rowers mode where the blue values in the middle show the power left and right and the orange on the outside show your stroke length left and right. Um, and you got the power balance and all that stuff. That's actually a force by angle curve, but that's the signal mode I work with the most. So I configured the top right value to be watts and um, the second from the right to be a stroke rate. And then you've got uh, two sets of curves. Like in a boat, green is left, red is right from a rower's view. So red is uh, port side, stroke side, left is starboard. And uh, the top curve is my angle position. You see, right now it's in the middle. So the curve goes flat right on the, on the right. You see the scale with zero, that's zero degrees. As it goes to the catch, it goes all the way to the catch angle. So I'm at about roughly 80 degrees right now, which is utopia. So nobody knows. Almost nobody catches here effectively. And then I go to the finish, and you see the, the red line here goes all the way to whatever we have, 40, 45 degrees. Almost nobody finishes here because the blade is already pointing so closely to the boat, and that the catch is pointing so far away from the boat, there is not much use trying to accelerate the boat that way. Same is for the left. And the bottom curves are the force I apply over the timeline. So there's a strain gauge on both sides. And it, there's a mass as a 30 millimeter steel axle, and it actually bends. So when you pull here, this thing bends. And what you see here is the raw data that is being sensed, that is being sensed and measured, and it's just transferred to the tablet. So there's no, there's not much room for error. So we have a 99% accuracy rate. It's, it's used at the university, so there's not much. There's no algorithm for raw data. You <laughs> just don't need that. Okay, now the issue here is that as as you guys approach the catch, you go forward a lot. So you have, theoretically speaking, a lot of forward angle. And try to make it uncomfortable all the way, all the way, okay? Now, if you go forward to the catch this way and stay there, everybody will say, nobody does that. But, in a heat of a race, <laughs> everybody does this. I want to beat you, okay? So the idea is that at the catch, you should always be able. It's a club. You shouldn't sweep in a club because the transmission can hold it. Uh, but the pros are all down here. So let's just. I go very light now. I go to the catch, okay? And now the most important thing is that I should be able to let go of my oar handle anytime. I should be able to go to the catch and say, oh, <laughs> I don't need you. I control my body, I control the oar, not vice versa. You know, there's no use doing that. I, if I let go now, I drop. And that is because my upper body weight rests on this thing here. Now, if you want to start an effective drive, and you have to go from forward to start, your back is messed up. So it's much better to, to keep that pelvic rotation, go forward, be able to let go anytime you want. Have a slight, you see there's a slight dip, right deeper and then left. And I said, not much. And I haven't rolled sweet in a long time. And then all you do is you start, it's a gently, you see the force curve? I don't, I don't apply any force here. It goes out, boom, has nothing to do with power. It is not about how hard you pull, it's about how direct the upper body is. There should be no change. When you look at the good crews, there's a 
in. In. That is what we need. Same with sculling. If you go to the catch, no change. No change. It's not like... And what most people, I'm so conditioned to have the right catch here, but most people actually do this. Here. They go down and they go up, and then their catch looks like this, a bit shaky. Every time the quarter drops, you go up. So this thing only senses the force horizontally. If you are uh, in the boat, the boat will not accelerate if you dig deep. It should that's very cool. It doesn't matter for the boat. So we only sense what makes sense. So every time you go up, the curve drops. See this? I pull. <laughs> because every time I go up, there's less force horizontally with more force vertically. And that is exactly the issue you have. So digging deep with your blades creates a sensation of having a lot of resistance, but it's deceiving. There is no horizontal resistance. And horizontal resistance is the only thing here in front of the blade that will get us going. Um, the issue now, the underlying issue with your early ri raising of the upper body is exactly this. Up, 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 up until you finally have a resistance. You see that bend in the curve? Uh, with some people it's even worse. I'm not good at faking that. And the idea is to place your blade, leave it, Control the shoulders, start to drive. Same with sweep. Control the shoulders, start to drive. Control the shoulders, start to drive. That's direct. And uh, the second thing is, if you go from essentially that position, which is already too much back lean, my upper body is almost upright, to legs and then arms, what happens is that your the upper body swing is lost. And that is only visible if you do a um, long or high intensity piece. Okay, it's very hot today. It's very hot. I think we've got some 30 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Celsius up here. Um, nevertheless, I will try and give it a go for a minute or so, see if I can actually um, mimic that and show you the difference. Either you pick up and you drop because you cannot hold it, or there's a massive, so there's a connection problem, then a peak, and then it drops. That is what happens after two, three minutes. Whew, I'm starting to get soaked here. Uh, these are the new shelves we're building right now. That's all wood for these crates that we built. So every, every pro comes in these crates, maybe. Is there one inside? Let's have a look. Okay, so here's, here it is. Everything is secured. It's like a piece of furniture. So there's um, there's wood, a wooden frame on the, on the right. There's a wooden frame on the left. This is yeah. This is how how it looks when you get it. Um, everything you see secured, double secured with zip ties and wood that is actually screwed down. If you want to work with me, go to armtraining.com. This is where you have all the training plan packages and also live online coaching packages for indoor and on water sessions. The more subscribers I have, the more time I can spend with these videos. So thank you very much for watching, sharing, subscribing and liking. And I'm very much looking forward to see you in the next video. All the best. Bye bye.